ko tāku manu, e manu ti ori ori mai rā ki runga i te taumato o mā tairangi. My bird sits aloft on mā tairangi, Mount Victoria. Kia wakarunga tu rā ki ngā iere o ngā hau. O ngā hau o te wanganui ātara, o ngā hau o te taiao. Listening to the winds of Te Whanganui Ātara, Wellington Harbour. Listening to the winds of our environment. A te a taku titiro atura taku manu. Kei wa ora kei tero. Kia wakarunga atura ki ngā manu e kapa kapa mai nei ki runga i te wenua. He cast and looked down on Te Aro, Courtney Place, listening to the murmuring and the chatting of people as they gather outside of the Opera House. Huakina tūrā te tatau o te whare ki a takahia tūrā te rai, te mārea ki auru tuma maira ke raru i te tāhuhu o te whare. And as the doors open, the bird witnesses the chattering crowd disappear into this amazing facility, into this whare. Ko tai mai te rahi, ko tai mai te marea, ki te hone rea tūrā, tēnei rangi papai, tēnei rangi maumahara, o tā John Trumma. Coming in, and entering into this whare, we gather here today to acknowledge and celebrate the life and the deeds of Sir John Trummer. Me huri atu ki a rātou, ko a whetu rangitia. E koro, a hakoa ko nunumi atu rā i te karua te tangata ki pairangi. I tanumea tonu koe e ki roto i te puna mahara o te hunga ko tai mai nei. Although you have now traversed into the spiritual realm and beyond, you are captured in the vault of remembrance of each and every one who has gathered here in their memories. Mai to ahunga mai, mai pitone ki tō āringa ki tā wāhi, ko te manu e kaiana te miro no nā te ngāhere, ko te kaia, ko te manu e kaiana te mātauranga no nā te ao. From your very, very early beginnings in Pitoone, Pitoni, you are like a young bird, for a bird who consumes the middle berries owns the forest. However, in your travels, a bird that consumes knowledge, in pursuit of knowledge, owns the world. Ko taku manu e rere kapa kapa atu rā ki a rangi nui huri tai a uio uio ki te ao. This bird has flown around the world, consuming the knowledge. Hoi anō rā, ko te manu e oki atu rā ki tōna kāinga, Kia wāngai atu ki ngā manu pīrere, ngā manu hiakai. Ka ora tōna whānau, ka ora tōna hapu, ka ora tōna hapuri. And in your travels, in collecting and learning vast amount of knowledge, this bird returns home who empowered, who shared his knowledge from afar to strengthen not only his family, but the wider community and those who is, he has influenced. Nō reira e koro, nei, koe kairunga, mā kere mai tō koro wai aroha kirungi a tātaue whakarawika mai nei ki roti te puku. Nei koutou kairaro, maranga, Maranga, maranga ki wainga ki a tātou. Au, sir, 
If you are above, we ask that you share your sacred cloak of love for all those who have gathered here this afternoon. However, if you are below, we ask you to rise and join and be part of us to help celebrate your life. Nore re koro, te nei ka mihi rawa atura, a koko ake nei ka ura atura, ka kiti atura, i ngā hua, i ngā kura, i kane kane mai rā, i ti kapa kapa mai rā, ki rungi tā tamira nei. And finally, as the curtains rise, we're here to celebrate the dance, the dances that are about to unfold to celebrate your life. Loreda, ko koe te po huria tu ki a tātou, ki te tai awatea, ki a whakarawika mai nei, ki te whakanui atura tēnei rangi papai, tēnei rangi maharahara, tēnei rangi miharora. And in closing, I'd like to acknowledge each and every one of you here this afternoon as we celebrate an amazing day, an amazing show, and the gifts that Sir John Trimmer has left behind for each and every one of us to pass on to the next nation. Nō reira, kuri atu ki a koutou, ki a tātou katoa e whakarau i ka mai nei te nā koutou, te nā koutou, te nā koutou katoa. And acknowledging each and every one of you here gathered today, thank you once, thank you twice, thank you three times. Irungi te kaupapo te aroha, te aroha, te whakapono, me te rangi mari e tātou tātou e. In the name of love, hope and peace, together we will unite. Te nā koutou, te nā koutou. Kia ora tātou katoa.
Kia for your beautiful words in the opening of this proceedings. Thank you, the artists of the Royal New Zealand Ballet, for that powerful performance of Te Ao Maroma. And I wish to acknowledge um, Moss Patterson um, for allowing this work to be performed on this really special occasion. Sir John Trimmer, or simply John T. Kua hinga te totara i te wanui atane, an absolute legend a national treasure. Lady Trimmer, John T's friends and family, his many former colleagues that are here today, his adoring fans, no mai haere mai, welcome or welcome back to this beautiful theatre. A place where John spent so much time, where he on this very stage performed so astonishingly and astoundingly, his performances are so memorable. No reira tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. Koto refium toko ingoa. Koto hara te monga to uh, ko waikato te awa. Koto ponuia tia te roto. No topo aho. And it is in topo over 50 years ago that I have my first memory of John T. As a shy 10 year old, I asked him to sign my autograph book in the Topo Nui Tia College Hall. I would never have dreamt that one day I would dance alongside this great star or become a close colleague and friend of this wonderful man. For those of us in the company during my time, two names were always linked together, Sir John and Lady Trimmer, Jackie or John T, or just Jacks and John. These two, were, these two were there each time the ballet company nearly folded while others had abandoned it. They would pick up the pieces provide the classes, the rehearsals, and head back out on the road to keep the New Zealand Ballet alive. I, like many other dancers in the company at the time, am so grateful to Sir John and Lady Trimmer. Jackie guided me and rehearsed me through the start of my career. Jonty inspired and taught us stagecraft, artistry, theatre etiquette, and the professionalism needed to survive in this art form. Even as the star performer he was, he showed us the necessity to be humble, to never be too big for your boots or even your point shoes. Aroha mai, Jackie. From all of us, thank you so, so much for all your support. So today you will hear about New Zealand's dance legend, about a national icon, about our greatest dancer. You will hear words such as humble, kind, gentle, 
fun, full of life, repeated many, many times. You might leave the theatre feeling disappointed, asking, why didn't they show this? Or, I wanted to see that. I would have loved to have seen that. And for this, I make no apology. It's quite simply, Jonty's body of outstanding work and his many, many roles were so vast in number. To show something of all of his brilliant performances would mean we would be here all weekend. But please join us as guests of the Royal New Zealand Ballet over the road at the St James Theatre after this tribute where we can share the stories and remember all the gifts that he gave us. Thank you, Wellington City Council, for hosting this amazing event. And a huge thank you to the team at Creative Capital for all your work making this happen. Um, I would now like to invite to the stage Gisela Carr, Head of Capital Creative, sorry, Head of Creative Capital. Thank you, Turud. E nā mana, e nā reo, e nā waka, e nā ho e whā o te motu, rauranga tira mā tēnā koutou. E mihi ana aho ki te tangata whenua o te reho rohe nei, taranaki whanui, te ati awa, nā ti toa rangatira. Nā mihi nunui ki a koutou katoa. Tihei mori ora. I'm honoured to speak on behalf of the City of Wellington to recognise and celebrate the remarkable dancer Sir John Trimmer, John Jonti. I'd like first to acknowledge the community here today, City Councillors, current members and distinguished alumni of the Royal New Zealand Ballet, dancers, crew, creatives, management, the dance and performing arts, seal, arts sector leaders of the city and the country, and members of the public, beloved audience members, members of the Trimmer family, and of course, above all, acknowledging and sending much araha to Lady Trimmer, Jackie, admired and loved by many, John's greatest supporter, his protector and his guide, idolised by John, and at the heart of the life we are here to celebrate today. We are celebrating a remarkable man and a remarkable career, both for its calibre and, its, and for its longevity. And much of that career, almost 60 years, was spent here in Wellington, working in this theatre and the city's other theatres and in the ceaselessly busy dance studios theatrical boards and an orchestra pit that were also trod by Jonty's father and mother. Wellington is the art city where artists make the work and then we tour it to the rest of New Zealand. So it is entirely right that the city honours and remembers its outstanding rangatira Sir John Trimmer. In the rarest of all city tributes, we lower the lights on Wellington theatres and artists dedicated their performances when Jonty died, and we come together now in the same spirit. John Trimmer had been a name of legend to me since I was a child. I studied ballet with his sister Pam. He was famous in New Zealand when there were no famous artists, only famous rugby players. And I worked with him at the Royal New Zealand Ballet. His career is synonymous with that company and with dance, the most ephemeral of art forms and its magical, evanescent practitioners. I also honour you, dancers, so many here today, who create joy for us as audiences, driven as artists to select careers which are often fleeting and for which you may pay a physical price later in life. Dancers are not in it for the money. In the company today of so many distinguished dance alumni, and having read and watched numerous interviews with Jonty over the last little while, I have been reflecting on what made him so beloved by New Zealanders. It was not just the outstanding talent, nor the longevity of the career. There are many fine, indeed exceptional artists who do not become household names. I think it was in part because he came back at his peak in a New Zealand where so few artists did not, could not come back, and he stayed. And he and Jackie lent their mana 
to the New Zealand Ballet to see it endure 70 years last, last year, 2023. And also, and above all, because of his unassuming New Zealandness and sense of fun. The word icon can be overused, but it truly applies here. Others today will speak of his career and of his friendship, and of their friendship. There is the dancer and there is the man. I will say a brief word about the man. I remember how when I joined the ballet, the dancers told me to follow the trimmers on tour if I wanted to know where the best places to eat and stay were. Then there was their famous cat whom they smuggled into various motels. <laughs> Speaking about this with dancer Owen Anderson, a, a contemporary of mine at the company, Owen vividly remembers Jonty's prowess with makeup, his ability to mix colors together like an artist's paint palette, and his mastery in creating characters. He was often also amused by Jonty's subtle use of adding bits of bling to any costume he wore. <laughs> adding another bit of bling every night until the final night where he would be often totally bejeweled. <laughs> he would carry such pieces in his makeup kit for this purpose, often procured secretly at any of his wardrobe calls. Jonty would say, everyone needs to sparkle, and the older one gets it becomes even more important and then shriek with laughter. His laughter was always infectious. In so many interviews, Jonty describes himself as lucky, but it is we and New Zealand who have been the lucky ones. He indeed, is indeed our dance knight who has fallen, our totara, kuihina te totara. We salute and thank you, Sir John. To me, is the most wonderful expression I can. Well, I used to throw myself around madly, and uh, the feeling was exhilaration, absolute exhilaration. And um, I think bringing out what I feel about music in movement, I think it's it's wonderful. I'm one of six children. I'm the fourth in line. We all danced around. We all played instruments um, from guitars, ukuleles, pianos and piano accordions. My mother danced in musicals around Wellington. She played the piano and my father, although he was a world class shearer, he played the violin in local orchestras as well. My oldest sister, she was about um, 13 years older than me, she toured with JC Williamson's just after the Second World War. Uh, and uh, she was in the ballet part of musicals and going to see her dancing. Also, uh, remembering my grandfather, Dad's father, he was also, like my father, a wool shearer, a wool classer, and he taught tap dancing in the shearing sheds in the off season. So it, I've been lucky, it's been in the family all along. His gift for dance, recognised at an early age, quickly flourished when he was invited to join the Royal New Zealand Ballet at the age of 20, and a year later gained a government bursary to study at the Royal Ballet School in London. To quote dance critic Jennifer Shannon, the extraordinary longevity of Trimmer's career is probably due to the fact that right from the start, he developed equal ability in both classical as well as character roles. So when inevitably the classical phase came to an end, the character strengths were totally secure and the transition seamless. John was awarded a special Merit Award for achievement in the 1980 Countrywide Building Society's Entertainment Awards. John's award recognised not only his gifts as an artist, but also commended his willingness to stay here and contribute, rather than seek an international career at the top overseas. This is indeed a surprise. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank everyone who 
nominated me, whatever they did, thank you very much. I'm very thrilled. <laughs> I spent three years in London in 1959, 60, 61, and I went to the Royal Ballet School in 1959, and the next two years I was with Sadler's Wells, and uh, I did not, I not only performed in ballet, but I performed in opera and musicals as well, which was fantastic, good all-round um, experience. And I decided it was time to come home. I wanted to come home, uh, so I did in 1952. That's where I toured with the opera company here in Carmen and Marriage of Figaro, and uh, also with the ballet company doing various classical works. Um, then the next stint overseas was 1965-66 uh, with the Australian Ballet and we toured for six months in Europe and America and then throughout Australia. Uh, I like living here, that's, that's one of my things, it's, it's, um, it's restful, I, I just like living here. In 1999, John Trimmer was knighted for his services to ballet. John's reaction was typically modest, as this news item of the time reveals. I think of myself as being lucky to be able to do what I love, and this is the absolute cream on the topping. John Trimmer on life in ballet and now as a knight. Okay. The 59-year-old first started dancing as a 12-year-old. That's probably terrible. <laughs> Like anybody else, you, um, even if you've got talent, uh, it has to be nurtured and trained. Six years later, he joined the Royal New Zealand Ballet and has been there for 41 years. I always thought I would um, retire about 36. John has signalled retirement from dancing many times since the 1970s, but has never taken the plunge. Instead, he has gradually diversified into other creative areas, joined by his wife of 40 years, Jackie, who once shared the stage with him in the Royal New Zealand Ballet, became its ballet mistress until 1994, when she retired and took up painting. John's involvement with ceramics and a long-term interest in the broad spectrum of the arts has contributed to his artistic maturation as a dancer. Yes, oh yes, I, I feel every single branch contributes to each other. Absolutely, they all come together and can blossom. They really do, um, from just walking on the stage, to speaking, to um, playing with clay, painting, whatever. I'd love to be able to sing, that's the one thing I can't do. Each year brings something new and different which is thoroughly enjoyable, but I think going back into the past, I think I do adored doing Giselle, um, Albrecht in Giselle, and um, I quite enjoyed Swan Lake, but not as much as Giselle. Uh, Petrushka, I love Petrushka because that was a, a heart-rending role to play. And we go back to Russell Kerr's um, The Prisoner. That was exciting. In the later years, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed playing Cinderella's stepmother. Now that was fun, good comedy role, very, very meaty. Um, and Peter Pan's Captain Hook, that was good fun.
I had to do Pilates for two weeks just to walk on. <laughs> I'm Louise and I joined the New Zealand Ballet when I was 16 and I returned to the company on two later occasions as principal, brief occasions. I was with the National Ballet of Portugal as soloist and the Hong Kong Ballet as a founder member and principal and ballet mistress of Singapore Dance Theatre. Sir John Trimmer was my lifelong and very dear friend. He remains for me and for a lot of New Zealanders the essence and the spirit of the Royal New Zealand Ballet. An inspiration to generations of dancers and audiences, colleagues and artistic directors. Sadly, he is not. We are here together to honour and remember him as dancers, as friends, as audiences. A friendship, in my case, of 58 years forged here on this very stage. We are also here to pay our respects to Lady Jackie Trimmer, John's wife of 63 years, his lifelong support in dressing rooms, backstage, on tour buses round and round New Zealand, <laughs> through all the overseas companies and in their home life, shared by a procession of pussycats <laughs> and Thomas the Terrible has already had a mention. As dancer, John contained or seemed to have effortless ballon and he danced with what we call a poumon. He had a graceful, elegant carriage of his head and back. Now that's a pommel with shoulder, but never with attitude. <laughs> As a partner, John inspired confidence. His sheer touch allowed you to dance way past where you ever thought you could. And he brought joy on stage to us amidst moments which can be terribly nerve-wracking with Grand Pas de Deux in performance. In later years, he was full of surprises as he explored his eclectic talent for performance, taking it as far as the exploration of his inner self would allow. Um, in, when John arrived at rehearsal, there was immediately an atmosphere brought by his presence. John's here. We knew that our work really mattered then. We really mattered. He channeled a mystic presence that gave us the feeling that we now had access to something way beyond ourselves, the art of ballet. And I just heard today that as recently as a couple of years back, when John came to the studio, most days, 
the young dancers of the companies felt the same. In class, John would often break out in hilarious operatic arias, and we would all fall about laughing. Sometimes, sometimes, we could join John in the unofficial company anthem. <laughs> First lady, no, I'm not going to say the words here today because they are way too outrageous. But we all know what they were. From a little skinny kid on stage, seggy tights, at the lower hut comms, John became a Kiwi idol, a cherished New Zealand icon. And yet, he remained the sweet, humble, kind man that he was. I am so grateful to Sir John and Lady Trimmer that my lifespan has touched theirs as a dancer in my personal life. And now, sadly, I feel with John as he faces the beyond.
I'm Lee Patrice and I was with the Royal New Zealand Ballet in the 80s and 90s. John Charles Trimmer. John. Sir John. But most of us here today, I think, knew him simply as Jonty. Husband to Lady Jackie Trimmer for 60 years. A founding member, principal dancer, head of company, leading artist, acting director, actor, entertainer, comedian, teacher, creator, friend, mentor, and so much more. Member of the Order of the British Empire, knight, legend, in short, New Zealand dance royalty. Humble, unassuming, and hardworking, focused, clever, gracious, spiritual, extraordinary, and fun. There are so many words to describe the jaunty that we knew and loved. Like many of you, I had the great privilege of working alongside Jonty in the studio, touring, and on stage. My first encounter with Jonty was in 1978 as a student, a student extra in Sleeping Beauty, when Jonty was dancing Prince Desiree to Patricia Rianne's Aurora. Like Turid, I never imagined that in years to come, I too would be partnered by this unique, superbly skilled, and charismatic lead dancer. My first experience of this was as the mistress, mistress in Andrei Prokofsky's Königsmark, partnered by Jonty in the lead role. Soon after, I was ushered onto the stage behind Jonty's Drosselmeyer cloak in the Nutcracker. How magical he made this character for the children, cast, and audience alike. Just one example of his unique sparkle, of which there were so many instances. Magnificent as Rothbart and Swan Lake, Playfully wicked as Madge and Lassell feed, hilarious as Cinderella's stepmother, majestic in so many royal roles, and suitably pious as religious clergy, at least from the audience's point of view. <laughs> Jonty was unsurpassed in the character roles he continuously reinvented for multiple productions over many years. His Dr. Capalius is one I am particularly fond of. His performances were by no means a silent art. One could hear him quietly muttering, humming, swooshing his spells, tutting and talking to his dolls as he went about his work, absolutely immersed in his role and bringing us all along with him. Jonty was also a master of disguise and his pre-performance routine was part of his art form with expertly crafted makeup, facial exercises and visualization, including sound effects, as he morphed into his character for the evening. Many dancers, directors, stage crew, musicians, actors, and colleagues have been touched by Jonty's magic, his onstage and offstage presence, remarkable talent, and good humor. There were plenty of opportunities, choreographed or not, for Jonty to bring that humor to the stage. His famous ditties could often be heard sung from the wings, or indeed, sometimes on stage. We've just seen Giselle. One of his famous ones was, poor Giselle, she's not well. <laughs> poor Giselle, she has got on to who hell. <laughs> or during the rake's progress, oh dearie me, I do want to pee, and I don't care if the audience sees. The pain's getting worse. By the end of the verse, I shall have to pee on the floor. Of course, the audience was none the wiser, but at times the conductor may have been a little bemused. <laughs> In the ballet of Jean Batten, there were some spoken lines by actress Cheryl Cooper, 
a former dancer with the New Zealand Ballet, who played Jean's mother, while Jonty played Jean's father. During one performance as Jean, I was expecting to hear Cheryl deliver the line, Jean, where are you? But Cheryl was nowhere to be seen or heard. Improvising, I called out, Mother, where are you? And from the wings came an intoned reply from Jonty, She's on the loo! Underlying all the fun, Jonty exuded a spiritual intensity. Recently, I was reminded about the times one would find Jonty perched cross-legged on a wicker skip, eyes closed in reflection or meditation, oblivious to the chaos going on around the theatre, tuned into his own peaceful space. And then at random moments, you might look around to see Jonty throw one leg into the air, his good one, he often said, and catch it against his head with eyebrows raised and an expression of surprise as though that leg couldn't possibly belong to him. <laughs> Jonty was very generous with his time. He would stop to chat with the children who performed with us in various towns, sign autographs, seemed to always remember someone's mothers he'd met before, or maybe that was just another example of his acting prowess. In any case, he treated everyone with equal respect and kindness. If he didn't like something or something that was being said, he would simply put his lips together and say, hmm, while in cheekier moments, he would put his finger to the side of his mouth, purse his lips and look sideways. Those hands so expressive and who can forget the way he would throw his arms wide with bravura and glee as often seen in his portrayal as the entertainer in the ragtime dance company, one of Jonty's all time favorites a role with plenty of dancing and a romp from start to finish, which audiences everywhere loved. On joining the ranks of the then New Zealand Ballet, I knew little of the sacrifices that people like Jonty had made to keep the company going through the years. But it became evident that with the support of Jackie at his side, the trimmers had often been the strength that had kept things ticking over and led the company towards the place it stands today. Once when speaking with Jonty about fundraising efforts and friends of the ballet, he said, darling, as long as the company continues and we all keep dancing, that's all that matters. It's enriching to remember the company's history, foundations and traditions and honour those who have given a part of themselves to the life of the now Royal New Zealand Ballet. Thank you, Sir John and Lady Jackie Trimmer, for ensuring New Zealand dancers had a place to call their own and be proud of. The longevity of his career is testament to Jonty's immense talent and dedication, and it's hard to imagine the New Zealand dance world without him. But we are all now charged with nurturing his legacy. Rest in peace would seem the appropriate thing to say at this point, but we all know Jonty will be high kicking with the angels and giving them his royal wave. <laughs> and just in closing, and on behalf of Lady Jackie, I just wanted to say um, a big thank you to everyone who has enabled this um, memoriam to happen today. Um, it's a very special time for us all.
Kiki Koto Katoa. On behalf of the Royal New Zealand Ballet, I would just like to say, Sir John Trimmer, thank you. Thank you for your performances. A beautiful dancer, a dancer actor, and one of the great character artists of our time, not just here, anywhere. Thank you for the generations of dancers that you've inspired, nurtured, encouraged, and the way you selflessly supported them to become the best artists they could be. And thank you most of all to you and Lady Jackie Trimmer for your sacrifice, giving up an international performing career to return home to New Zealand and the company when we needed you the most. We are who we are because of you, and for that we are eternally grateful. You have made it difficult for us, Jonty, as we turn to the future, because it seems every work we look to perform, we say, that was Jonty's role. And Jonty was so brilliant in that. And even in new creations, Jonty would have been so great in this role. But at the same time, we're uplifted and strengthened because in every theater, that we perform here in New Zealand. We feel your presence is with us. And in that way, you're with us still, and you will always be with us in every performance we do. Thank you, Jonty. I'd now like to ask John Avery, one of our current trustees and longtime supporter of the company, to offer his reflections and thoughts on Jonty. Thank you, Ty. Kia ora. I bring greetings this afternoon from Dame Kerry Prendergast, the Chair of the Royal New Zealand Ballet, my fellow board members, and the whole of the Royal New Zealand Ballet Fana, who are pretty well represented down there. Dame Kerry, you've told me lots of times when I've come to Wellington that you can't beat Wellington on a good day. I hate to say it, but it's not one of those days today. And I'll also apologise because once you're doing one of these things and if you're down the speaking order a little bit, there's always the risk that what you've worked out to say has pretty well been said before. Well, I can tell you that. That's exactly what's happened to me uh, this afternoon, so I'm sorry if you're going to have to listen to some of the reminiscences which are the same. When Jonty received his knighthood, I wrote to him the usual letter of congratulations, and I asked him what I should call him. Should he be Sir John, or should I call him Sir Jonty? He eventually replied to me and told me that he was still just Jonty. And to me, that summed him up. An immensely gifted, talented man, yet also a man who was very, very humble. It can easily be said that Jonty was the Royal New Zealand Ballet. Many members of the public completely associated the ballet company with Jonty. And if Jonty wasn't performing, they weren't that interested in coming in some instances. He was a very big draw card. And I can think of many times over the years that it wasn't just in theatres. He would be in public libraries around the country doing makeup demonstrations for bunches of young kids. And it, he was an all encompassing man who, who gave his all to the community and to the ballet company. He gave the ballet company an absolute lifetime of service. As has been said by previous speakers this afternoon, he could have chosen to have danced almost anywhere in the world, but he didn't. And he and Jackie returned to New Zealand and the company where he remained. They chose to remain th here through a number of quite difficult times is the easiest way to put it. They could have left gone on and forged a good, successful, remunerative career elsewhere in the world, but they didn't. They stuck it out when the Royal New Zealand Ballet needed them the most, 
and showed the whole of the country and the funders that the ballet company was here to stay, it was in for the long haul, and now it's been here 20 years, 70 years, I should say. I won't comment on Jonty's uh, prowess as a dancer. That's been told many, many times already this afternoon. But he was a wonderful mentor, as Tur had said, to dozens of company members over decades. He schooled them in all sorts of things, just how you went on in the theatre, how you behaved, what it was like to be a professional dancer on the road, as opposed to someone who was just in a home theatre. He gave a great deal of wisdom, and it was that wisdom that he gave to me when I was a very rookie board member, and he was gracious with his time and sat down with me and explained a lot of the history of the company, why things were like they were, there was a reason for it, and he imparted off that uh, company intelligence that is forever grateful for an organisation to have people who are able to do that. He was a wise, wise man. Jonty was a beacon for dance in New Zealand, and we, we are immensely grateful to him that he chose to shine that beacon as part of the Royal New Zealand Ballet. Thank you for all coming here this afternoon to honour and remember a wonderful New Zealander. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Kerry Ann Gilbert and I was a dancer with the Royal New Zealand Ballet in the 70s, the 80s and the 90s. <laughs> I first danced with John T in 1976 and I was 16 years old and my final performance with the ballet company in retirement I performed the role of Juliet, and John T was my father. John T and Jackie were like my ballet mum and dad, and played a significant role in my life. I have written a humble poem in memory of John. Its title is Our Jaunty. 
a man of many talents, to name of just a few, dancer, artist, actor, an accomplished gardener too, loved by oh so many, in whose lives he played a major part, creating special memories that will remain forever in our hearts. A natural born performer, New Zealand held to acclaim, the majority of Kiwis all know Sir John Trimmer's name. John's humour, always delightful, delivered with a twinkle. At post-performance functions, ballet family would be blessed with a sprinkle. <laughs> a glass of sav in hand, that glimmer in his eye. Fingers dipped into his wine, fucking my child, he'd bless as he walked by. <laughs> Son, brother, husband, and uncle, legend, mentor, and great friend, Jonty's stories will remain golden and continue to transcend. My name is Anne Rouse and former director of the New Zealand School of Dance and closely associated with New Zealand Ballet for many years. How fortunate we have been that for more than 60 years John was such an integral part of the ballet company and his contribution to the arts in New Zealand has been incomparable. Thank you, John T for sharing your gifts with us. It is a privilege and an honor to be reading the tributes for Jaunty. Gary Harris, artistic director. Rather than writing a boring speech, I decided to just make a list of how fabulous Jaunty was. Humble, gentle, naughty, funny, a joy to work with, a consummate professional, adored and loved by everyone, approached everyone and everything with a smile, a complete one-off, a delight, a gentleman. Ethan Stiefel, Artistic Director. Upon my arrival at RNZB, I, beca I became immediately aware of Sir John and his profound and lasting impact on not only the ballet, but also the arts in general in New Zealand. Jaunty was one of those characters that only ballet can create somehow, and in turn he created characters and interpretations that only he could make. I had the great privilege to create a role for him in a little comedic romp of a ballet entitled Bia Hal, somewhat early in my tenure. I probably don't have to remind anyone that outside of his depth and elegance of interpretations, what made Jaunty special and inherently a national icon was also his mischievous wit and comedic timing pitch perfect for this particular endeavor. As I often look back on my time with the RNZB with nothing but fond memories, I always have a sense of gratitude to have had the chance to work with Sir John and that he and I were naturally synergized in our sense of humor and in the idea that joy and silliness are as equally powerful and profound as poignancy and passion. And so, if you are listening to us, Sir John, and if there is somehow, some other world we need to pass into, 
Look up my father, who is a recent arrival onto the afterworld scene. I think you'll find a friend and someone you can get raucous with, <laughs> as well as someone who would express appreciation for all that you did to support his son. Francesco Ventriglia, Artistic Director. I am honored that my Romeo and Juliet pas de deux has been performed on this occasion. Dear Sir John Trimmer, it is with great admiration and respect that I pen this tribute to you, a true luminary of the dance world and a cherished figure in the ballet community of New Zealand. As a former artistic director of the RNZB, I had the privilege to witness the contributions you have left, an indelible mark on the hearts of dancers, audiences, and enthusiasts alike. Your artistry, dedication, and passion for the ballet have captivated audiences both here in New Zealand and across the globe. Your performances were a testament to your extraordinary talent, grace, and versatility. Through your art, you brought characters to life, evoking emotions and enchanting audiences with every step, every leap, and every expression. Beyond your remarkable talent as a dancer, you nurtured the growth of the Royal New Zealand Ballet, guiding it to new heights with your presence and dedication. Your artistic vision, coupled with your unwavering commitment to excellence, elevated the company to international acclaim. You played a pivotal role in shaping the future of ballet in New Zealand, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and ignite passion for dance in generations to come. But beyond your professional accomplishments, it is the personal impact you had on those fortunate enough to cross paths with you that remains truly remarkable. Your kindness, humility, and genuine care for others have touched countless lives. You have been a mentor, a role model, and a source of inspiration for aspiring dancers, instilling in them the belief that dreams can be realized through hard work, perseverance, and a deep, deep love for the art form. I am grateful to have had the privilege of witnessing your performances and experience the, experiencing the magic you brought to the stage. Your presence, both on and off stage, exuded a warmth and radiance that left an indelible impression on all who had the pleasure of knowing you. Your generous spirit and infectious enthusiasm for dance have left an enduring impact on, on the ballet community, forever shaping its future. As we gather to pay tribute to your remarkable career and celebrate the legacy you leave behind, know that your contributions will never be forgotten. Your artistry and passion will continue to inspire dancers, artists, and ballet enthusiasts for generations to come. Sir John Trimmer, you are a true legend, and your impact on the dance world and ballet in New Zealand is immeasurable. Thank you for sharing your extraordinary talent, your unwavering dedication, and your beautiful spirit with us all with heartfelt gratitude and admiration. Martz and Amanda Skook, Artistic Director and Executive Director. It's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege to contribute to a few words in acknowledgement of John T on this occasion when we remember and celebrate his life. John T. was a kind and generous man with a great sense of humor. But more than this, he was a consummate professional and an extraordinary artist. He was easy and fun to work with, and one always felt confident that whatever he produced in the studio and on stage 
was going to be excellent and of the highest artistic standard. During the time we knew him, Jonty's achievements were many. As an, as an actor, he had an ability to reveal the unique qualities of every part he played. One of the many roles we remember him in with particular fondness is as Captain Hook in Russell Kerr's production of Peter Pan, a character he portrayed with a perfect blend of wickedness and charm. There is a saying that no one becomes a prophet amongst their own people, but Jaunty did. He was known and loved throughout the nation. Thousands of aspiring dance students in New Zealand have grown up with Jaunty as a role model. Very few people have achieved such iconic status in their home country. Jaunty has left an extraordinary legacy in New Zealand performing arts. It is a privilege to have known him and to have worked alongside him. Ashley Keeler, Artistic Director. I first worked with Jaunty when I made a dance drama for RNZB called No Exit about a man and two women trapped in a hell of their own making. Jaunty immediately found the essence of the character, projecting an inner stillness in the middle of a torturous situation. When I returned to New Zealand as artistic director, the company was going through a serious funding crisis. We undertook long tours to Germany and to U USA before returning to Wellington and an uncertain future. During all this turmoil, turmoil Jaunty constantly proved a strength and calm beyond both of experience, born of experience, excuse me. His performances were always magnificently judged. More than a fine technician, he was one of those rare people who constantly worked in truly humble service of his art. Mark Keyworth, General Manager and Ex Executive Director. This is a tribute to Sir John Trimmer expressed by Mark Keyworth. I regret not being with you in person on this important occasion. I also regret that our dear friend Harry Haythorne is no longer with us. Harry would have contributed to this occasion in his unique way. So please allow me to express my sentiments on behalf of us both. In our short lifetime, many people cross our paths. Ordinary folk and sometimes extraordinary folk and rarely someone unique. Jaunty fitted the last category, a character abounding in talent, full of charm and generosity of spirit. A man among men who carried the spirit of the ballet for his entire adult life. Not just the ballet, but also the other artworks that benefit from his talents, opera, drama, and film in particular. Jaunty was the least selfish of people, sharing his skills and knowledge with his colleagues and particularly students. Jaunty, your charm and wit will be missing from a world in dire need. I send my love to his wife, Jackie, the other half of a formidable team. Sir John Trimmer, we salute you. Patricia Rian, New Zealand Ballet Director, Directorate, 1979 to 1980, and guest principal dancer. As a performer, John Trimmer was a force to be reckoned with. A born entertainer, he was eccentrically talented as an actor and dancer with innate musicality and sense of timing which made him a perfect partner. However, he probably shone the brightest in the character roles he immersed himself 
into over the long years of his tenure as a linchpin of the Royal New Zealand Ballet. John and I danced together on m many occasions in Giselle, La Sylphide, Sleeping Beauty, and more. I was always grateful for his stoic support on stage and his naughtier sides cheered many a less than perfect touring date. He gave his performing life to generations of adoring public in New Zealand. He will be missed, but he could not have given more. Farewell, old friend. R.I.P. John T. I know it's because I saw the company performing in quite a number of different towns in New Zealand was the amazing recognition from the audience. The first time John came on stage, you, there would be this wave of recognition from the audience. It's John Trimmer. And um, it was quite obvious that the audience really enjoyed watching him and the, and the, the response was really, it was really quite, quite amazing. Without words, the whole body has to take on the tone of the character. It has to, every little gesture, every, every little movement, every little nuance has to be the character and has to be developed. And this is the amazing thing because when you see that, you see a complete performance. He studies everything right down to the last little detail. And uh, every, every performance, slightly different. Every little performance is something that, every performance is the most important performance for him. So that every audience he performs to feel special. And uh, there, there are not that many who can carry this sort of thing over for such a long period of time. The continuity of having a star of his quality uh, remain with the company over such a long period of time is, is, just, is just wonderful because it means that he has carried the sort of history of the company along with him. Uh, not only has he carried the history but he's able to absorb new things that have come into the company. Uh, he's been able to move with the times. I mean there's nothing old-fashioned or, or back into the old world of ballet as far as John is concerned. He goes with the times, he responds to every new idea, new choreographers, new decor you know, he goes to the excitement and he can interpret it. And so from that point of view, he has been quite remarkable in every way. That man has kept that company alive. He could have gone anywhere in the world when he left Denmark. He had offers and he decided to come home. He saw it was very bad here. He decided to help it. And he did. And he's done ever since. This could not have happened, this wonderful memorial, without a few people to thank, and I must do this. So firstly, Stephen Blackburn for organising everything. Uh, you must be the busiest person at the council, but we could not have done it without you. To Venues Wellington for the use of the Opera House and to Peter Gear out the back. Ty King Wall and Tobias Perkins from the RNZB, B, P, uh, RNZB, RNZB um, for providing everything for this tribute. I basically, Ty had just arrived and I walked in and said, you've got to do this. And he's done it. It's fabulous. Thank you so much. <laughs> Susanna Lee Jeffries and her team, especially Elizabeth and Eliana, for organising everything to ensure that as many people as possible knew about this helping um, gathering all the content I needed and as well as hosting the event, do not forget, afterwards at the St. James. Thank you so much. Um, personally, I have a huge thank you to Dan Harris for helping me bring all those photos and footage together so beautifully. And to Peter Coates, thank you. Thank you for your passion for the arts and dance in Aotearoa. We are so grateful and lucky you have documented so much over the years and that you allowed us to use all that um, interview footage today. <laughs> to Abby Watton at Natonga Sound and Vision for finding some real gems, which you're about to see, and to Roger Booth for also helping and providing photos. To Andrew Lees and his crew for bringing such an amazing production value to this performance. Just a huge thank you to you all. 
Honestly, there are as many lighting cues and fly cues as a three-act ballet. <laughs> and to all the speakers, thank you for your words and for sharing your memories of John T. Many of you are dancers, and I know how hard it is to get up and speak. And finally, to all the performers, John T. would have been so proud and would have absolutely loved it. But wait. We have one more in performer to introduce, Helen Mulder. Helen will now present the first scene of the play Meeting Karpovsky, in which John portrayed a famous, fictitious Russian ballet dancer. Helen and John performed this play many times between 2004 and 2017. Some of John's most famous and favourite roles were used in the production. So, Meeting Karpovsky. This is the day. Greetings, Petrushka. Oh, blithe newcomer. How very lovely you look. The girl in the photocopy shop said you'd be slightly grainy. And, and you are, but Earth has not anything to show more fair. All of you, I'd like you to meet Petrushka, a puppet. A puppet? Yes. Oh, venerable Petrushka, I would like you to know what an enormous pleasure it is for me to have you dancing on my wall keeping me company in this large and rather dilapidated house and in this particular attic room. Thank you for coming. I'm Sylvia Morton, and tonight we're looking into the life of a great dancer, Alexander Karpovsky. Years ago, I had the good fortune to see Karpovsky in the great ballet theatres of the world. Sitting in the dark, a mere observer, Waiting for the curtain to rise, waiting for the divine athlete to spring upon the stage. Karpovsky's roles have ranged from the tragic puppet clown Petrushka, a creature of straw who develops a capacity to feel, to the hilarious widow Simone. In La Fille Malgarde, the badly guarded daughter, he is often asked when he is going to retire. He will never retire. He is a divine athlete, an angel. Here he is as Herr Drosselmeyer, maker of magic tricks in the Nutcracker. And here, dancing in the noble classical style as Albrecht in Giselle. Albrecht, the playboy count, betrothed to another. Giselle discovers his deception, dances to her death, and becomes a villi, the ghost of a girl who has died of a broken heart. Broken. You're in that one. Would 
go like a dance? <laughs> no, I would not. No, I'm sorry, Sylvia does not dance. She goes to the ballet. Well, she used to when she was married to... Uh, she has watched a lot of dance. She even knew some of the French terms. Capriot de Vaux, pas de Boré de Rire, for example, but she does not dance herself. Uh, she has seen Fontaine, Baryshnikov, Sibley, Seymour, Trimmer, Tharp, and of course, she has seen you, Alexander Karpovsky. 127 times. <laughs> oh, oh, you, you didn't get your tea or your apricot slice. He'll come back, Sylvia. He'll come back.